Hello and welcome to the second producer's notes for DCS A10C Warthog. In this note, we're going to take a look at how you start up an A10. Now this can be a rather long and intimidating process, so you also have the option to start from the runway or up in the air with everything up and running for you. But just like we did for DCS Black Shark, you also have the option to start from the parking ramp and press a key and have everything started for you automatically. Uh, but for the purposes of today's note, we'll go ahead and do this manually. Uh, to start, we'll come down here to the electrical panel and we'll place the uh, battery uh, to power and the inverter switch to standby. Uh, this provides power now to the uh, instruments and also to the igniters in the two engines. On the fuel panel, uh, we have four internal fuel tanks in the A10, two in the wings and two in the fuselage, each of which have their own boost pump. So we're going to need to uh, provide power to those. So we'll go left and right for the wing pumps and left and right for the fuselage pumps. Uh, now we'll set the uh, fuel flow switches uh, to normal which will provide fuel from the tanks uh, to the engines, so left and right. And then coming down we have the auxiliary power unit switch, the APU, that will be used to start the left and right engines. Okay, and with that started we'll see the uh, EGT exhaust gas temperature and the RPM uh, for the AT APU to come to life here on the engine panel. And that's all looking good. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn on the uh, APU generator switch. We'll provide electrical power uh, from the APU. Now we'll go ahead and start the left engine. Uh, all we need to do is move the left engine throttle from off to idle. And now you'll see back on the engine panel, uh, the left engine gauges starting to come to life. And we'll do a, a quick visual check of the left engine, turbines turning. And I'll come down to the uh, armament HUD control panel and we'll set the central interface control unit, the kicking switch, to on as well as the integrated flight and fire control system to on. And between these two we now have information up on the two MSCDs as well as the HUD. And on the HUD it's asking us if we want to do a, a bit test, a built-in test. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, the enter button, say yes. So it's going to initiate all that automatically. And then coming down to the right MFCD uh, we have uh, 20 OSBs. I'm going to go ahead and click on the CDU, the uh, control display unit. And then coming further down, I'm going to go ahead and put on the uh, AC drainer switches for the left and right engine, so they're uh, uh, putting out power for us. And then below that, we have the CDU, the central, uh, the control bay unit, and this is our central interface for the IGI, the embedded GPS INS system. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the CDU now. Now, up on the MFCD, we'll uh, see a built-in test for the CDU. And that's going to run automatically. And we'll go ahead and also enable the IGI to get the uh, navigation system all aligned. Uh, coming back to the lighting panel, uh, it's uh, near sunset, so I'm going to go ahead and put some internal lights on. better and it looks like the uh, the bit test is uh, down the HUD so I'm going to go ahead and uh, enter and exit that and we'll go ahead and uh, start up the right engine now same as we did uh, for the left and we'll see the right engine uh, needles uh, start to start spinning and do a quick visual check of the right engine Test the fuel gauge. Looks good. I'll do a light test to make sure of caution, warning, and other indicator lights uh, are all functional. And that all looks fine. 
And let's give it noise. I'm going to go ahead and lower the canopy now. And I'll put on the uh, anti-skid and my taxi lights. And I'll go ahead and lower my flaps down to uh, maneuver for takeoff. And we'll turn on the uh, stability augmentation system for the uh, left and right channels for both yaw and pitch. This will uh, provide much easier flight and coordinated turns. Uh, take off pitch. And I'll go ahead and turn off the uh, APU now that the engines are uh, providing power for me. And we'll turn off the APU generator. Uh, go ahead and put on my uh, VHF radios and uh, tune the top one to uh, 127.5. And place my uh, UHF to manual. And take off the uh, standby attitude indicator and set my uh, clock to uh, stopwatch. And turn IFC on. And we've got full uh, HUD uh, symbology now. Take the master caution off. And it's getting dark, so I'll go ahead and put the um, HUD into night mode. That looks better. And I can go ahead and uh, raise and lower my seat height. I'm going to raise it up a bit. Oh, probably a little too much. So lower it down. That yeah, looks a lot better. Go ahead and put my countermeasure system to standby. My navigation system to flight plan. Oh, that looks fine. And my INS is re ready, so I'll put that in nav mode. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, load all my um, uh, data cartridge uh, data that I uh, put together in the mission planner for uh, navigation, weapons, uh, and that sort of thing. So once I get stars back on the, um, the different indicators, it'll indicate that all the information has been uploaded to my jet. And there we go. So uh, here's my TAD, uh, my Dismas uh, digital storage management system, got a lightning on 10, uh, my targeting pods off, so I'll go ahead and turn that on uh, to get that cooled down. And I'll put CDU on my other display. Go ahead and enable my uh, nose wheel steering. And with that, I am ready for uh, taxi to take off. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this note on how to start up an A-10, and I will talk to you next time.